Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're just going to be going over the crop transform and the move tool. Very simple stuff. There's just three of them. So let's get started. So I have one of my drawings here on the screen just to make it a little more interesting so it's not just my scribbles and a uh, gray canvas. So we're going to start with the transform tool. You can click on it right here on the left hand side. Or you can hit Control T. Come on, there we go. I always use Control T. I'm sure you've seen in my other videos. I use it almost 90% of the time. So as you can see, these little boxes and a sort of black border appear around the image. These boxes, you click on them, and you can resize it to whatever you want. If you want to resize but keep it proportioned by not making it a rectangle or squished or anything like that, uh, hold shift and drag. So now no matter where my mouse goes, it's only going to be uh, scaled in, in that aspect ratio, in that ratio that I have it at. If you go to the box on the side, you can stretch it out or stretch it up and down. And you can hit Control Z anytime you want, and it's not going to take you out of the tool as well. Now, if you hover your mouse just slightly outside those boxes and that outline, you can rotate it in whatever direction you want. Works on the side, and it works on the top. And if you want to shear it, then these arrows will pop up if you hover on that border in between two boxes. You can go left or right, you can go up or down. And that's cool, but there's more. Go to the tool options, and you have more options to pick from. Uh, the first being you can change the pivot point. So by clicking this lower left box here, if I go to rotate it, it's going to rotate based on the or that um, pivot point. It's kind of like the source of, of the motion. I can do it back to the center, I can do it from the left hand side here, put it back, and this is just uh, changing the settings. So if you want to scale it to a specific percentage, we'll just say like 150, it'll do automatically for you. And same with all this stuff here. So instead of doing it freehand, you can use numerical values. Cool. And then you can change the filter for it. Like how it's going to... Because when you transform something, it's going to... It looks fuzzy. So, obviously it's not fuzzy. I'm just going to leave it at... I think it's bicubic. It retains the quality better. But experiment with it, see if, you know, maybe one is better than the other for whatever you're doing. Alright, we're going to go back to the control. Let's go to the next uh, option, which is the perspective, which does exactly what it says. If you click on one of these boxes, and notice that there's only four right now. So we're going to grab this corner, we're going to drag it down, so now it looks like a wall or one of those crazy like screen wipes that you had in like your 90s how to use windows 98 videos you'd watch in high school or if you're watching this and you're young then you have absolutely no idea what i'm talking about so this red point is the horizon line so if i move it up you can see that the direction that the perspective i chose is going is aligning with that red dot which is cool whoa doing some crazy stuff and you can still uh, move these boxes and change it. So we're going to undo that. Don't want to keep it like that. And then we're going to go to the warp tool. Now, this is sort of like the transform, but instead of squares, we get circles that appear here. If you click on one, it turns black, and you can move it. And it's kind of like you're taking a piece of paper and you're bending it. Now the cool thing about this is it's like reversing 
it right here. I keep pointing at my screen and you can't see me. <laughs> if you look at this part here, it's uh, kind of reversing it. So like if you were to take a piece of paper with an image on it that was printed on both sides, it's kind of trying to replicate that. It's not really realistic, but it's trying. It is giving this really cool 3D look to it. So if you're trying to do some weird cloth thing or, I don't know, any, anything like that, you could play with that. And you can mess with the strength of that. So if you go to default, it's a little stronger. It's, it's uh, more curvy. If you go to strongest, it's not as, it's, it's a little more loose. And if you go to strong, it's much looser. And you can sub, and then uh, for the dots, we undo this. Or the control point. We'll call them the control points. We can add 10. Whoa, there's so many. So basically, it's 10 up here and 10 here. So we have 100 points, control points that we can mess with. Which is kind of nice for. F oh my gosh, that's going to make me dizzy. For fine tuning something that you want to warp, but not like big chunks, but in smaller chunks. And draw the points. Boop, 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 boop. Then lock them. And then move. Which is really neat. Whoa, she's breaking her back there. Alright, so we're going to undo that as well. Hit Control Z. Alright, so if you do the flexibility, you do subdivide. We'll just do five points instead. Oh. There we go. So it's giving me a little bit more wiggle room. And then moving this to front, it's more flexible. So I'm going to change that down to zero. And undo that. Okay, so that's done. Or that aspect of the tool option is done. We'll go to. Um, oops this right here so we're kind of bit almost like the selection tool we're selecting a small part of the image whoops and we're going to be moving just that section as you can see my image is kind of exploding so I'm just not going to mess with that too much it is a little it is finicky it's kind of like the puppet tool in After Effects or, or Hit Film or other programs that are similar. You have to be, it's not meant to do large chunks and move it at ridiculous percentages. It's meant to do minor adjustments and stuff like that. The last one is the Liquify tool. And everyone should be, well not everyone, but if you use GIMP or Photoshop, it's they have this tool. And I believe they have something like that in Illustrator as well, and possibly Inkscape, I'm not sure. But you're kind of just dragging your mouse along your image and you're moving these pixels around. You're kind of smudging it, but you're still re you're kind of retaining some of that drawing still. It's not uh, completely gone in terms of that line quality that I had. Alright, so I'm going to undo that. And just like the other tool options, you can change it in numerical values, like how much you want affected, uh, the size of the brush, the spacing, you know, maybe you don't want it to affect so much space, you know. So mess with that as needed. Oops. Okay, I'm going to go back to the normal tool. Now we're going, going to go to the crop tool self-explanatory you click and drag and this will pop up so if you click anywhere in these white boxes you can move your area that you'd like to crop to so let's say you accidentally moved over here for some reason and you want it to go over here just click and drag and if you like that you hit enter and it's cropped I'm going to undo that there's a couple interesting things you can crop just the layer so if I duplicate this I'm going to move that. Oops. Over here. And we'll just kind of fade it out just so we can see the difference. 
I go to the crop tool and I just want to see oops, this here. So as you can see I cropped just that layer while my other layer remain, remained unaffected and my canvas size remained unaffected. And this might be useful for you if you're bringing in reference images and you only want to see part of that reference image. You can just crop that and that it's a layer and you know makes life easier. So I'm going to undo that as well. Go back to image. So there's this, uh, a feature of the grow, of the grow, a feature called grow. And Photoshop has this as well, I believe. If you click and drag, if you're drawing and you're like, oh my god, I ran a space in my canvas, I have to go to image and scale, uh, resize the canvas, and you're like, oh my gosh, 500 pixels wasn't enough. I have to go back and add more. Instead of dealing with that, you can yes, click on the crop tool, click once on your canvas, and it will automatically size itself to the canvas size. And then you can take any of these points and drag wherever you want. So you have a visual visual representation of what your new canvas size could potentially be. So if I was drawing and I, I needed more space in the bottom, all I had to do was just drag this bottom box down until I was satisfied with the amount of space I had. It's much easier than making guesswork when you resize your canvas. And click on that again. I can move it back up if I want. And that's it. Uh, center. It's going to center my canvas, uh, or center everything, uh, the image on my canvas. So when I crop it, it's everything centered. Well, within the size I had already. And we keep grow on because it's very useful. And then for the de decoration, it's um, how many lines you have, or how many of the grid. How many lines? changes the appearance of the grid here. So the rule of thirds um, is usually when you're drawing you want like uh, your elements either at this line or at this line um, for the best appealing image uh, composition. And you can do passport photo I guess or crosshair which is just like two lines which is fine. And you can also take it all off with none. I like to keep it on the thirds. I can hit the button crop and it crops. And, whoops, whoa! <laughs> so if you hover over any of these boxes and use your scroll button on the mouse, it will scroll those numbers up and down for you. Cool. So if you need your image to be a certain size and always remain at the same uh, ratio, you can do that with the ratio box. If I hit 1, I can lock that, and then no matter what I do with my uh, the boxes on the crop tool, it's always going to be an equal numerical value. So I can do 200, and it'll be 200 by 200. And I can scale it up, and it'll be 2150 by 2150. Now if I want that ratio to be something different, like 1.5, I can lock that, and I get more of a rectangle. And this can be helpful if you are making thumbnails for a site or if you just um, you got your final image and all your images need to be the same size and you want to get rid of uh, like the border that you've worked on or something for print. You know, that can be really, really helpful. That way you're not saying you're guessing, well I think this might be it, you know, or maybe if I crept a little bit, a bit more over here, it, it saves you a lot of time. That's pretty much it for the crop tool. All right, and last but not least is the move tool. You can move everything in a group, all the layers in a group, um, the layer with the content or your current layer. Um, this is a, you might want to use this. This kind of reminds me of GIMP, where wherever you click on the canvas, it's going to click um, or select that layer. So in GIMP, I'd have I have like an image here or something over here, and I'd go to the use select tool and I'd accidentally click on it and I'd move it. That's what that's going to do. Maybe you want that, maybe you think it's cool. I mean, have at it. Or you can just move the current layer, which I recommend keeping. 
you can uh, change the exact position on your canvas. Now, I do want to exercise caution with this because it is a very slow tool. So you might be sitting here waiting like a minute, like not a minute, but like 10 seconds for this to finish moving. And I mean, it's still going. Is it done? Yeah. So I don't really use the move tool unless it's a, like a small image or a small part of the canvas or whatever I'm working on. I always hit Control T and I move it. I mean, it's look how much faster that is. It's ridiculous. I may not be able. I mean, I can still position it to the way I want it to. So if I want it to be, uh, I'll just you know, 100. I can still position it exactly. So I'm not really losing too many of the features, just the moving, um, whatever the selection point is, and moving all group layers. Alright, so that's it for those tools. I hope those were helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Follow me on social media if you have other questions as well. And make sure if you like this video, hit the like button. If this is your first video you're watching from me, make sure to hit subscribe if you like this to make sure you're not missing any of my future videos. That, all right, and that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, subscribe, ask me questions. And that's it. Have a good one.